instructional design for e-learning for university lecturers. Part two, online course creation. Online learning is a broad term that comprises a number of instructional environments and approaches. Basically, there are three main types of online course that I want to discuss about how to create and the appropriate tools, platforms, and equipment for creating them. The different multimedia resources available both online and offline, open source and paid versions you need to create your courses. These three types of online course that I want to talk about are synchronous, which is a real-time type of course offerings that require the instructor and all enrolled students to interact online simultaneously, similar in some ways to a webinar. Participants interact through text, video, or audio chat. Synchronous learning environment enables students to participate in a course from a distance in real time. Asynchronous, which is self-paced types of course offerings that do not take place in real time. Students are provided with content and assignments and are given a time frame to complete coursework and exams. Interaction usually takes place through discussion boards, blogs, and wikis. As a result, there is no class meeting time. Asynchronous online learning environments are effective for students with time constraints or busy schedules. Hybrid courses. Hybrid is also known as blended or flipped courses. These are learning environments that allow for both in-person and online interaction that meet partially in person and partially online. Usually, hybrid courses meet in person several times during a semester and provide for computer-based communication in between those face-to-face -face sessions. Distance learning centers and on-campus courses can have online asynchronous components added for after-class work. Online courses can have synchronous video chat sessions or live lectures mixed in with asynchronous discussion boards. Sometimes these mixtures are determined by company or institutional policy. Other times, they are left up to the instructor. For example, if your students are working adults that need maximum flexibility, you might decide to make your course entirely asynchronous. This would probably mean that you would not spend much time on tools that enable video conference required skills for creating online courses. Creating an online course requires a lot of time and effort, but it can also be a fulfilling and rewarding experience. With the right preparation and planning, you can create a course that offers a real value to your students and helps them achieve their goals. There are many ways to create and deliver online courses, and creating online course requires some certain skills. Then, what are the basic skills you need to create an online course? Number one, proficiency with typing and word processing. Number two, proficiency with slideshow presentation. Number three, some familiarity with web-based interactions such as email and chat rooms. Four, familiarity with conferencing software. Five, familiarity with digital media creation tools such as audio and video recording and editing tools. 
Number six, basic knowledge of graphic design. Number seven, proficiency with e-learning authoring tools. Number eight, basic knowledge of learning management system, LMS applications. Number nine, experience in successful internet searches using a variety of search engines. Required tools. Creating online course obviously requires some certain software, which refers to as authoring tools and hardware too. Better software and equipment cost you more, but saves you time, but you do not have to panic over it when you are just starting out. Just use what you have. You will be surprised to discover what your Android phone device is capable of doing. I will deal with that too in my subsequent episodes. Just continue being with me to learn more. Once you get on track, you can gradually upgrade to better software and equipment. Here, I would like to give you a highlight of some commonly used tools and equipment. For what processing tools? Microsoft Word and Google Doc. For slideshow and PDF creating tools, Microsoft PowerPoint, Google Slides, Foxit, Adobe PDF Reader, etc. For video capturing or recording hardware, digital camera, camcorder, DSLR or mirrorless 4K camera, or Android or iPhone cell phone, other accessories and gears required include microphone, tripod or gimbal or stand, lighting, bug, bug drop, storage device such as external hard disk or SD card, teleprompter, and computer system. For screen recording tools, OBS Studio, Zoom, Screen Customatic, Camtasia, etc., etc. For video editing tools, there are plenty of video editors available, both free, that is open source, and premium for you to download and install on both PC and Mac computers. Here I will recommend five that are free, easy to use, and as well as versatile and sufficient enough for you to edit your course. Windows 10 Video Editor, Open Shot, Shortcut, Adobe Premiere Element, and DaVinci Resolve. For audio editing tools, Adobe Audition, Audacity, GarageBand, if you are using Mac computer. Graphic design tools. You need Adobe Illustrator and Adobe XD. Authoring tools. These tools allow you to export your project in a SCOM compliant format. So it can fit LMSs and other hosting tools. There are Articulate 360, iSpring, or Adobe Captivate. To download any of these open source software, just go to Google and type the name and search. Select the link that is from the developer or the creator and download it. Creating the course. Design and development. The instructional design process involves Several key steps, including neat analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. The neat analysis step involves identifying the learning needs of the learners, the learning environment, and the learning objectives. This step is important for ensuring that the instructional design is targeted and relevant to the learners. The design step involves creating a plan for the instructional materials and activities, including selecting the appropriate teaching methods, technologies, and learning strategies. 
This step is important for ensuring that the instructional design is effective and engaging. The development step involves creating the instructional materials and activities, such as creating course materials, designing activities, and developing assessments. This step is important for ensuring that the instructional design is of high quality and meets the learning objectives. The implementation step involves delivering the instructional materials and activities to the learners. This step is important for ensuring that the instructional design is effective in the learning environment. The evaluation step involves assessing the effectiveness of the instructional design and making improvements as needed. This step is important for ensuring that the instructional design is continuously improving and meeting the needs of the learners. Instructional design documents. The next chapter of our lecture notes on instructional design. In this chapter, we will be discussing an important document that serves as the blueprint for the development of any online course. The instructional design document IDD. The IDD is a comprehensive document that outlines the goals, objectives, and design of an online course and serves as a guide for the development team throughout the entire course development process. In this chapter, we will explore the various components of the IDD, its importance in the development of an effective online course, and best practices for creating a high quality IDD. So whether you are a university lecturer or an instructional designer, this chapter will provide you with valuable insights into the critical role of the IDD in the course development process. An instructional design document, IDD, is a document that outlines the design and development of an e-learning course. It provides a detailed plan for the course, including its objectives, target audience, course content, instructional strategies, assessment, and evaluation methods. The IDD serves as a blueprint for the development of the course and provides a roadmap for the instructional designer, course developers, and subject matter experts to follow during the development process. It helps ensure that the course is aligned with the learning objectives, meeting the needs of the target audience, and is effective in achieving its goals. The IDD typically includes the following sections. Introduction. Provide an overview of the course, its purpose, and its target audience. Learning objectives. Defines the course's learning objectives, which are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound goals that learners are expected to achieve, which, which, which is called SMART. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-bound. Course content. Uh, the IDD contain the course content. Uh, the course content outlines the course content, which includes the topics, subtopics, and learning materials that will be covered in the course. Instructional strategies describes the instructional st strategies that will be used to deliver the course content, such as lectures, case studies, simulations, or interactive activities. Assessment. 
specifies the assessment methods that will be used to evaluate learners' knowledge and skills, such as quizzes, exams, or assignments. Evaluation outlines the evaluation methods that will be used to, ex to assess the effectiveness of the course, such as learner satisfaction surveys, performance metrics, or feedback from SMES, subject matter experts. The IDD is a crucial component of the e-learning development process, as it helps ensure that the course is designed and developed to meet the learning objectives and needs of the target audience. Conceptualizing a prototype. Conceptualizing a prototype is typically discussed in the initial stages of the course development process. After the creation of the instructional design document, IDD. Once the IDD has been developed, the next step is to create a prototype of the online course, which serves as a preliminary version of the final product. The purpose of the prototype is to provide a visual representation of the course design and to test and refine its effectiveness before full-scale development begins. During the prototype conceptualization, Phase, the development team works closely with the instructional designer and the lecturer to create a detailed plan for this prototype, including the course structure, interface design, and multimedia elements. This phase typically involves the use of storyboards, mock-ups, and other visual aids to help the team visualize the course and ensure that it meets the requirements outlined in the instructional design document. Once the prototype has been conceptualized, the team can begin to develop a working version of the course, which can then be tested and refined based on feedback from students and other stakeholders. By conceptualizing a prototype early in the development process, the team can ensure that the final course meets the needs of learners and is optimized for effective learning outcomes. Conceptualizing a prototype involves creating a preliminary design or model of a product or service in order to test and refine its functionality, features, and user experience. The process of conceptualizing a prototype typically begins with defining the problem that the product or service is intended to solve and identifying the needs and preferences of the target audience. This followed by brainstorming and ideation sessions in which designers and developers generate and refine ideas for the product or service. Once the basic concept has been defined, learners and developers create a rough prototype or mock-up using various tools, such as paper sketches, digital wireframes, or 3D models. This prototype is then tested and evaluated, often through user testing and feedback. To identify areas of improvement and refine the design. The process of conceptualizing a prototype typically involves several iterations with each version incorporating feedback and refinement from the previous version. This allows designers and developers to gradually refine the product or service, ensuring that it meets the needs of the target audience and delivers a high-quality user experience. Overall, conceptualizing a story type is an essential step in the product development process, as it allows designers and developers to test and refine the product or service in a cost-effective and efficient manner.
by creating a preliminary design or model and testing it through user feedback, designers and developers can ensure that the final product or service meets the needs of its target audience and delivers a high quality user experience. Storyboard for conceptualizing video idea and its content. A storyboard is a visual representation of the key scenes or elements of a video, creating in a series of panels or frames, similar to a comic book. Storyboards are commonly used in the video production process to help conceptualize the video idea and its content. The purpose of a storyboard is to provide a visual outline of the video's story and content, including the shots, camera angles, dialogue, music, and other elements. By creating a storyboard, video producers can get a better idea of how the video will look and feel and identify any potential issues or areas that may need further development. A typical storyboard includes a series of panels or frames, which each panel representing a key scene or shot in the video. Each panel includes a visual representation of the shot, along with a description of the action or dialogue that takes place in that shot. Annotations may also be added to indicate camera angles, lighting, a sound effects, and other important details. Storyboarding is an important step in the video production process because it helps ensure that everyone involved in the project is on the same page regarding the video story and content. It also helps to identify potential issues early on, which can save time and resources in the long run. In summary, storyboarding is a visual tool that is used to conceptualize video ideas and their content. It provides a blueprint for the video story and content, allowing video producers to better plan and execute the production process. Miro mockups and in tools mockups. Mirror mockups and in tools mockups are two different types of mockups used in the design process for e learning courses. Miro is a collaborative online whiteboarding platform that is commonly used for creating wireframes, flowcharts, and other visual aids during the design process. Miro mockups allow designers to quickly create and share visual representations of the course content and layout, as well as gather feedback from other members of the design team. InTools is a suite of plugins for Adobe InDesign that is commonly used for print and digital publishing. InTools mockups are typically created using InDesign and allow designers to create more details, fixed perfect mockups of the course content, including images, text, and other design elements. In tools, mockups are often used in the final stages of the design process to ensure that the course content is visually appealing and easy to navigate. Both Miro and InTools mockups are valuable tools for instructional designers as they allow them to quickly and easily visualize the course content and layouts and gather feedback from other members of the design team. The choice of which type of mockup to use will depend on the specific needs of the project as well as the design team's preferences and skill sets. Gamification in instructional design. Gamification in instructional design is the process of using game design elements and mechanics to enhance the engagement and motivation of learners in an e-learning course. It involves the integration of game-like elements, 
such as points, badges, leaderboards, and challenges into the learning experience to make it more interactive and enjoyable. Gamification can be used in a variety of ways to enhance the learning experience. For example, it can be used to increase motivation. Gamification can increase learners' motivation to engage with the course by adding an element of competition or achievement. Improve retention. By incorporating game-like challenges, learners are encouraged to interact with the course content in a more memorable way, thus improving knowledge retention. Provide instant feedback. Gamification can provide instant feedback to learners on their progress and performance, allowing them to quickly identify areas of strength and weakness. Encourage exploration. Gamification can encourage learners to explore different areas of the course, allowing them to discover new content and engage with the material in different ways. When designing a gamified e-learning course, instructional designers need to carefully consider the learning objectives and the target audience. The game elements and mechanics used should be relevant to the content and align with the learning objectives. Additionally, the gamification element should be designed in a way that is not overly distracting or overwhelming to learners, as this can negatively impact their learning experience. Overall, gamification in instructional design can be a powerful tool for enhancing the engagement and motivation of learners, making the learning experience more interactive and enjoyable, and ultimately improving the effectiveness of the course. Creating artifacts. In instructional design, artifacts refer to the tangible or digital objects and materials that are created as part of the course development process. These artifacts serve various purposes such as supporting learning activities, providing visual aids, and enhancing the overall instructional experience. They engage learners, reinforce concepts, and align with learning objectives and instructional strategies. These artifacts are tangible or digital objects and materials created during the course development process. They include presentations and slides. These artifacts typically include PowerPoint presentations or slide decks that contain visual and textual information to support the delivery of content during lectures or online presentation. Handouts and worksheets. These Artifacts are supplemental materials provided to learners to facilitate their understanding and engagement with the course content. They may include reading materials, worksheets, checklists, or study guides. Media resources. This category of artifacts includes videos, audio recordings, animations, simulations, and interactive elements that are incorporated into the course to enhance learner engagement and understanding. Assessment and quizzes. Artifacts relate to assessments include quizzes, exams, tests, and other forms of evaluation designed to assess learners' understanding and progress. Learning management system components, that is LMS, in online courses, artifacts related to the learning management system may include discussion forums, assignment submission portals, grade books, and other interactive features that facilitate learner interaction and engagement. Graphic design elements. 
This artifact encompasses visual elements such as icons, infographics, illustrations, and images that are used to enhance the visual appeal and clarity of the course content. Interactive activities. Artifacts in this category include interactive modules, games, case studies, or scenarios that provide learners with hands-on learning experiences and opportunities to apply their knowledge. Artifacts in instructional design play a crucial role in creating an effective learning experience. They help to engage learners, reinforce key concepts, provide additional resources, and support the instructional goals of the course. Instructional designers carefully select and create these artifacts to align with the learning objectives, instructional strategies, and the needs of the target audience. The first stage of course creation is the framework or modules. This refers to the segmentation or outline used by online course designers to map out structure of the course. Instructional design framework or modules refers to the overall structure or organization of the course content. It is a visual representation of the course's key concepts, topics, and learning outcomes, along with the instructional strategies and activities that will be used to deliver the content. An instructional design framework or modules typically includes the following components. Learning objectives defines the specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound SMART goals that learners are expected to achieve. Content structure outlines the key concepts and topics that will be covered in the course and how they will be organized into modules or units. Instructional strategies describes the instructional strategies and activities that will be used to deliver the course content, such as lectures, case studies, simulations, or interactive studies. Assessments specifies the assessment method that will be used to evaluate learners' knowledge and skills, such as quizzes, exams, or assignments. An instructional design framework or modules is used as a guide for developing the course content and can be used to ensure that the course is well organized, logically structured, and aligned with the learning objectives. In summary, an IDD, instructional design document, and an instructional design framework or models are both important components of the instructional design process. The IDD provides a detailed plan for the course, while the instructional design framework or modules provide a visual representation of the course structure and organization. Creating slides. This is a page presentation or an exposition of a series of slides of text or images in an electronic device or in a projection screen. Some people make their videos without slides. What I realized is that most people like slides. They want to view text as you are talking. It will be a little boring if it is just you talking without any supporting text engaging them. Besides, some people understand lecture more if there is text attached, half page, full page. Here are some tips for designing effective presentations. Start with a clear message. Before you begin creating your slides, determine the main message you want to convey to your audience. This will help you organize your content and create a more focused presentation. Choose a simple and consistent design for your presentation, including fonts, colors, and layout. Use no more than two or three colors and fonts and make sure they complement each other. Use the same 
design throughout the presentation for consistency. Use images and graphics. Incorporate images and graphics to help illustrate your points and break up text-heavy slides. Use high-quality images that are relevant to your message and are visually appealing. Keep text to a minimum. Don't overload your slides with text. Use bullet points or short sentences to convey your message. Your slides should be visual aids to support what you are saying. Not a script for your presentation. Use animations and transitions sparingly. Animations and transitions can be distracting and take away from your message. Use them sparingly and only when they enhance your presentation. Practice good contrast and legibility. Make sure your text is easy to read by using a high contrast between the background and the text. Use a larger font size for headings and important points. And avoid using all caps. Stay focused and organized. Stay focused on your message. Organize your presentation in a logical order and use transitions to guide your audience from one point to the next. Rehearse your presentation. Rehearse your presentation multiple times to ensure you are comfortable with the material and can present it effectively. This will also help you identify any areas that need improvement. By following these tips, you can create a well-designed and effective presentation that will engage and inform your audience. Theming. The use of videos for creating online lectures is increasingly growing. The most common types and formats you will find in an online course include talking head video, which is the type of video where the instructor is filmed talking to the camera either directly into the cameras, into the camera, or slightly to the sides. Screencast or screen recording is a digital recording of computer screen output. It is also called a video screen capture, often containing audio narration and sharing of slideshow presentation. Video tips. Before I proceed further, let me share with you some tips for creating an outstanding video. Tip number one, smile so often, do not be boring. Smiles, they said, increases the value of your face and it will make your presentation interesting and fun. Use good lighting while recording your video. Position yourself facing the direction of the source of the light if you are using natural source of light. Use a microphone, if possible, to get a clear audio. Clear audio is even better than clear video. Audio is king, as they say. Choose an appropriate video format that best suits your presentation. For example, talking head video, slideshow presentation, or screen recording with slide sharing. B articulate and avoid being confused. Rumbling break things down. Use bullet points or scripts. You may even use a teleprompter. Arrange all your shots and recordings. Trim, cut, and structure them to be presentable enough. Now you are good to go. Finally, sharing and uploading. Online courses are created to be shared taught and disseminated via a platform. These platforms are called Visual Learning Environment, VLE. This refers to the technology that provides the platforms used for educational purpose, accessible through online or computer-based systems such as distance learning programs, professional certification courses, training and instructional videos or tutorials. Listing of platforms and methods used as visual learning environments are LMS, a learning management system. It's a software application or web base for the administration, documentation, tracking, 
reporting, automation, and delivery of educational courses, training programs, or learning development programs. Others are school portals and websites. Streaming platforms. These are online media services that deliver content directly to consumers, such as email services, audio or video conference, webinar or workshop. Now you have designed, developed, upload, and shared your online course to your audience. What's remaining now is evaluation to assess the course's effectiveness. The last stage is to conduct an evaluation. This includes evaluating the learner's performance and contentment and scrutinizing the course data to pinpoint possible enhancements. Few more things to wrap up. SCOM. SCOM stands for Shareable Content Object Reference Model. It is a set of technical standards used to create and deliver e-learning content. SCOM enables e-learning content to be shared across different learning management systems and ensures that the content is compatible with different devices and platforms. SCOM courses are typically packaged as zip files that contain all the necessary course materials, such as the course content, multimedia elements, and assessment. XAPI stands for Experience API, also known as Tin Can API. It is a specification that enables the tracking and analysis of learning experiences beyond traditional e-learning courses. Unlike SCOM, which tracks only e-learning activities, XAPI can track any learning experience, such as reading a book, attending a conference, or completing a simulation. XAPI uses a statement structure where each statement consists of a subject, verb, and object to record learning experiences. XAPI data can be stored in a learning record store, LRS, which can be used to track learners' progress and performance across different learning experiences and platforms. With that, I will draw the curtains and keep a date with me for more educational stuff like this. Cheers.